and uh, I'll just sort of dive straight in for a lot of people who uh, are of, uh, you know, different faiths and maybe of no faiths. Um, uh, they'll be asking themselves, well, why do we have an Archbishop of York as well as an Archbishop of Canterbury? And yeah. uh, what's the historic reasons for that? And uh, what are the different roles uh, the, the, the two, you know, positions play in, in British life? Uh, yeah, what a good question. Um, uh, and I'm sure I should know the answer. And I think I, think I probably do, uh, which is um, the, the first Archbishop of York um, was, was in the year 627, uh, and it was somebody called Paulinus, who was a companion of St. Augustine, who was sent by Gregory. Some people will know from their English history the story. Um, but of course, that wasn't the first Christian presence in this country. Um, that was Augustine 597. The Sea of York was established in 627. But, but Christianity in these islands predated that. Uh, Constantine was proclaimed emperor in York, um, and there's evidence of Christianity in these islands. And I say in these islands because often it was at the it was at the what we would think of as the extremes in Ireland, Wales, Cornwall, and and indeed the northeast. The northeast of England was a great centre for for Christianity. And so, in other words, the 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 the, the structures that we've inherited in the church predate, you know, mo modern modern nation states. Uh, that, that what we think of as the British Isles was a whole network of kingdoms. Um, and the church's governance kind of reflected that as the church became more. And so the primary unit of organisation for the church is a diocese. And so first of all, the Church of England is a network of 42 dioceses. And then from very, very early on, I'm afraid I haven't got the date at my fingertips, but from very, very early on, um, it was split into two provinces, a province in the north, a province in the south, with two archbishops. Um, and that provincial structure is, is also across the worldwide Anglican communion, something very similar in the Catholic Church. Um, now, if you wanted to be cynical about this, which I don't necessarily want to be cynical about it. You could say it was classic Roman politics, divide yeah. and rule, you know, make sure that nobody's actually in charge. Um, and so having two provinces in England was politically expedient for Rome. Um, and so I also have the title primate of England and Canterbury has the title primate of all England. Um, and 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 up until the Reformation, there was sorry. You'll wish you had asked. <laughs> no, question, no, it's right? very. Um, up, I promise. I promise. I'll stop in a minute. Um, up until the Reformation, there was often quite a bit of tension between the two provinces. Who had supremacy? Which was kind of. I mean, that was resolved centuries ago. And so the the Canterbury is the sort of, as it were the first amongst equals. We, we don't have that the Archbishop of Canterbury is not like the Church of England's equivalent of the Pope. He's yeah. not, not in yeah. charge in that sense. And York is seen as being the number two. But actually, um, our aim is to work very, very closely together. But that's the historic reason. Mm -hmm.